Welcome to Charter House Vespers Service. My name is Reverend Inetta Riddell. This is Sunday, November 24th. Children of God, whom do you follow? We follow Christ, ruler of us all. Children of God, what kind of ruler is Christ? Christ reigns with love and truth, justice and mercy, compassion and peace. Children of God, how will you live in the reign of Christ? We will join Christ in choosing love, truth, justice, mercy, compassion, and peace, even when our world tells us not to. Children of God, come, let us worship God whose love reigns over us, exemplified in Jesus Christ. Come. Let us worship. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading is from Psalm 93, the first through the fifth verses. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is gird, girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old, you are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters. More majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. This is the word of God for the people. Thanks be to God. The prayer of the day. Hide your truth in our hearts, dear God, for we are a people who are attracted to the error of our ways. We make bad choices, O oh Lord. We find ourselves in predicaments that make us sigh and groan. We have brought upon ourselves many of the disasters that have come our way. We were not honest and truthful in all situations. We even tried to hide from ourselves when we realized that we are responsible for our own mistakes. O oh Lord, do not remove yourselves from us. Forgive us, we pray, for the many sins, wrongdoings, shortcomings, and lies. Fill us with your grace and blot out our transgressions. Give us genuine love for each other, we pray. We thank you for the assurance of your forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God in community, Holy in one, hear us as we pray, as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Our New Testament scripture reading is from John 18, the 33rd through the 37th verse. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did it others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew. Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. 
For this I was born, and for this I came into this world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. I would like to talk to you today about the truth wins. The truth matters. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. What is truth? This is a question so many in our culture today are wondering. Unfortunately, many are concluding that there is no truth. It is also just as heartbreaking to know that even those who profess to be Christ followers are having a hard time coming to terms with what really is true. A recent survey by George Gallup Jr. revealed a sternly trend in our culture. According to Gallup, the evidence seems to indicate that there are no clear behavioral patterns that distinguish Christians from non-Christians in our society. We all seem to be marching to the same drummer, looking to the shifting standards of contemporary culture for the basis of what is acceptable behavior. In the latter part of John 18, Jesus is standing before Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. And Pilate had the authority to execute or not execute Jesus. And Pilate is trying to see if the testimony of the Jewish authorities had enough witnesses or enough weight in order for him to carry out their desire to have Jesus killed. So Jesus declared his kinship, which is a heavenly one. And Pilate can hardly believe that and laughingly exclaims, you a king? Jesus goes on to say that it was for that purpose, his kingship, his rule, authority, and influence, that he came into the world. And is also, he also bears witness to the truth. As a matter of fact, Jesus implies, if you were really interested in truth, Pilate, then you would listen to me. So y'all know the story, y'all know the discourse. Him and Pilate are having this conversation and Pilate's wife had told him, you know, he's an honorable man. I had a dream about this man the night before. And Pilate, I think, really was afraid, but because of the threats with Caesar and everything, he was nervous. So Pilate was looking truth eye to eye. Truth is of God. Truth is from God. And unfortunately, many like Pilate look face to face with truth and just walk away. You see, Jesus came testifying that God, his plan and purpose were truth. Jesus didn't come to this earth with a different agenda than his father. It was the father, and it was the father's will to send his son to testify of his author, authority, his kingship, and to the fact that God is true. There are two models of truth in our world today. Since Adam and Eve, these two models have been going on. One is true and the other is false. The first model is that truth is defined by God for everyone and it is objective and not absolute. In other words, what God said and commands is true for all people, for all times and for all places. So when God says thou shalt not commit, I don't know, adultery thousands of years ago, he means it today. Jesus goes on to say that we are not even to entertain the thought in our minds. 
The second model, and the one we are seeing more and more today, is truth defined by the individual. It is subjective and situational. In other words, what is true for you may not be true for me. When one follows this model, they look at the command, thou shalt not commit adultery, and say, well, that might have been true 4,000 years ago, but this is the 21st century. Everyone is doing it, so I will too. In other words, choices are made at that moment and depend not upon how it pleases a holy God, but how it pleases me. So truth defined by God is objective. It is defined outside ourselves. It doesn't depend on ourselves. Subjective truth depends upon what we think is right or wrong, not on what God thinks. Truth comes from God. I want to give some reasons today why truth matters and what happens when truth doesn't matter to an individual the effects on our lives. Let's talk about when truth doesn't matter. When truth doesn't matter to an individual, it's easy to be deceived. Psychic hotlines. In the world, if the world was convinced that psychics held all the answers in the palms of their hands, why would they put for entertainment purposes only at the bottom of the screen during their commercials. I, I, I don't know, that just kind of, I, I, it messes with me. I, I don't know. Tarot readings, damning in the cults, false religions, these are powerfully deceiving us every day. We all want to know our purpose. We all want to know how our lives can be better. We want to live forever. So it's easy to be intrigued when someone comes on the scene claiming promises to better your life or better yet tell you what's going to happen to you. For whatever reason, these destructive teachings and philosophies are captivating the minds of many. They sound and look really good, and yet they will leave you empty and unsatisfied in pursuing a deity that doesn't exist. When truth doesn't matter, decision-making becomes selfish and destructive. When there is no standard of absolute truth, we begin living our lives selfishly. We want what we want, a what's in it for me mentality. I want immediate gratification, and I won't stop until I get it. When people do not submit to absolute truth, chaos abounds. We see the implications of this every day. School shootings, suicide, sexual immorality. I'm not saying every person who does not believe in absolute truth ends up shooting someone. But I guarantee destructive, unhealthy, wrong choices will always outweigh right choices. The end results are staggering. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So why does truth matter so much today? Because truth liberates us to make right choices. It frees us from having to face horrible consequences for our wrong choices. We don't have to live in wonder or doubt. We make right choices based on God's truth. When we have a sense of right and wrong and know what God says, we don't have to worry about living with consequences. It's not worth it. Some of you are here today and know the pain and suffering 
that takes place from making wrong choices. You can make right choices. Now, Joseph was well-built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. But he refused. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? When we have a right view of God, many choices are eliminated because we know we shouldn't do certain things because it hurts God and causes horrible consequences because eternity is at stake. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We must understand what Jesus is claiming here. There is no other way to God. Jesus is being narrow-minded. Jesus said to himself, it is a narrow road. If this is true for all people, for all times, for all places, don't you think it is important for people to know truth? Because it honors God and shows you belong to him. So how do I discover truth? First, you have to be convinced that truth comes from God and the ultimate expression of the truth is in Jesus, if you subscribe to Christianity. Pilate asked, what is truth? He was looking face to face with truth. Jesus is king, but he is also truth. Because he is king, he is truth. He came from God to reveal his authority and to bear witness to the truth of God. Secondly, you need to abandon your worldly compass and begin charting a course for your life by the word of God. The Bible is your compass. God shows us what is right and what is wrong for all people in all places and for all times. When you discover truth, you teach it and model it for your children and your children's children and their children's children. We shouldn't just tell our kids that's punching that it's wrong and don't do it. Or when they are doing something that you don't like, you need to illustrate why it's not right. God wants us to love our neighbor. Therefore, we don't just look at them or turn away from them or talk about them and gossip about them to others. We are to go to them when we have a problem. Another example would be instead of telling your child to stop watching something on television or a sitcom because it's too R-rated or whatever, tell them why. Tell them because it has an overtone that it goes against your principles. Because God wants every person to wait until they're married to have sex, have these brutal, honest conversations with your children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren. Tell them that it's not appropriate. Because if you don't tell them, I promise you, someone else will tell them. And in this day and age, we have to coach and train up our children in the way that they ought to be trained. It's not appropriate that we watch and enjoy 
shows that are not appropriate with our children and not tell them and not say why it's not appropriate. We should be the ones educating them. We say this because there are consequences when we do not tell them why this behavior is not. And it breaks God's heart when we don't. I call all of us to discover truth. To discover truth is to discover Jesus. To get to know Jesus, we get into his word and we find out what pleases the Father. And we make decisions based on his word. Amen. Please receive this benediction. Beloved, may God bless you with the wisdom to discern the truth as you follow Christ, who testifies to the truth by embodying love in all times and in all places. Amen.